target up, <clears throat> target down. One shot, one kill. That was the methodology we had learned in the infantry on Fort Benning, gearing up for the big desert beach party back in the early 1990s when Remo Williams' adventure in the movie was beginning to begin. Hello, I'm Major Mike Webb, U.S. Army Reserve, retired with over two decades involved in what we describe as force projection, moving tactical and strategic assets and capabilities forward to respond to contingencies around the world, in which today we have over 150 hotspots to manage. And I had also been intimately involved in what is described as force protection, or ensuring survivability of those assets to enable mission accomplishment with the added enhancement value of returning young soldiers back home safe tomorrow. It's a job. It's an adventure. My phone and emails are buzzing with old stories about Bugs Peak. And let's just say what happened at Bugs Peak stays Bugs Peak, as we say, unless you have any no. But we just had a 50th anniversary reunion of the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. Special Operations Light Infantry Capability for Crick Reaction. Wheels up and ready to roll in 18 hours. Notification of which I am an alumni at Joint Base Lewis McCord in the Great Pacific Northwest State of Washington. And that seasonal Fort Lewis weather. I was AWOL and not able to attend, but have received some good intel from those forces. Over 2,000 veterans. Of Second Ranger who did deploy forward to that front, providing a fresh look at the increased op tempo that has developed in the modern era, which has seen a transition dating back as far as the Korean War, moving from conventional linear concepts of the battlefield operating environment to a non linear and multifaceted threat. You've gone to you know advanced leadership school, you probably read about this. Uh, and also, if you've been involved in the modern army, you've probably seen it close. But we've seen over the years a rapid progression uh, for professors. Uh, the operations uh, other than war or utwa, to low-intensity conflict or lick. And today, unlike just three decades ago, when there were only four companies in each of the three Ranger battalions, uh, one headquarters and three uh, maneuver uh, companies operating with one on high alert, one battalion on high alert, RF-1, and two down deployed. Uh, uh, now there are as many as six uh, assigned to a battalion with two battalions deployed forward for six months. That's a long time to be out front. And one remaining in reserve in the rear. New normal is now everything is a special operation. Even science is. You can't do everything very well for very long. And something is going to get lost in the cracks. Just hope and pray it ain't you. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to man up. I have to tell you, we were hit with a virus that uh, was met with silence and spread unchecked. Denounced for days, weeks, and months that led to more deaths, more infections, more stress, more loneliness. And I hope people people start crying, finding God as atheists, and uh, peeing in their skirts. Let's just say this was not a success story, and you got caught with your pants down. Get over it. Okay, you know, it's in the past. Gain situational awareness. There are only two types of soldiers on the battlefield quick and the dead, only the dead of seeing the end of war if you want to believe you're on vacation in the magic kingdom with visions of sugar plums dancing in your head rather than taking a knee commencing a security halt and developing an effective action plan reasonably calculated to get you the hell out of that crap that's up to you and the strong survive while the weak let's just say a merciful loving god in heaven may love you but quite empirically he does not like you are we clear get the hell out of my army Thanks for your service and go on your way. In the military, it is often said that intelligence drives the mission cycle. And upon receiving the mission, often in the form of a warning order, or a warning order, this constitutes the preliminary stages of what? Calling the chaplain? Getting a prayer? No. 
Preliminary stages of commencing the military decision-making process, MDMP, including a step devoted to mission analysis, as detailed in FM 6-0, Commander and Staff Organizations and Operations, dated May 16, 2022. Military commanders, uh, we're all leaders, right? Military commanders are certainly aware of the Mission Essential Task List or Medal. You should know it because you had to do it with your QTB, Quarterly Training Brief. Mark those things, trained and untrained. And as much as elite special operations, uh, soldiers in the Ranger Battalion are familiar with the priorities of work upon making that dog leg movement from the uh, direction of march into an objective rally point or ORP. It's uh, all about being prepared, ready to fight tonight. And priorities are all about readiness and preparation. You, know, you just can't pull that crap out your bunghole, become the wrong guy to attack. Because you are ready, willing, and able to bring that fight right back at that guy trying to come at you and take your head off. That disorganization at the initial stages provides an advantage to your adversaries, which is why, especially among fresh troops new to combat, the ambush is the most lethal threat. They get hit with an attack, times historically associated with fear, confusion, and despair like pandemics. And that emotional intelligence kicks in and they move under evolutionary pressure to that reflexive flight response to crisis fraught with ambiguity and danger rather than improvise, adapt, and overcome. Even John Kennedy said that the Chinese character, Mandarin character for crisis is two characters that are joined together. It is danger and opportunity. Okay. Make it your opportunity. You know, they can put you in a box. You're already dead. And hence the necessity in training environment, safe and secure from all alarm with the chaplain, uh, to conduct repetitive battle drills and form the muscle memory so as to enable a soldier to do something quite unnatural, supernatural, extraordinary, but proven to be effective in ensuring survivability and mission accomplishment. We need you to meet the moment, being all that you can be, even if you would rather be someplace else. We don't have time for a soldier to go through the five stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, wanting to get out, call their mama, write an email, fill out their absentee ballot in a foxhole. Houston, we have a problem. The earth is getting pretty big in our front window and we're going to need those gimbal numbers fast. Oh, whoop. Work problem, gentlemen. As soon as a staff member receives information that determines its relevancy, that staff passes the information to the appropriate headquarters. That's the way we do it in the Army. The key is relevance, not volume. Relevance. Give me information I need to know. To do my damn job. Lead, follow, or get the hell out of my way. And in the military organized by staff section, death 1, 2, S4, maybe 5 and 6, or G1 and up if you're at that level of command. To include subject matter experts and in personnel, intelligence, operations, logistics, perhaps even communications and signals in a maneuver unit working together as a team. Everybody knows what to do in his area of operations, but none is, although primary staff, in command. Who are the staff? They are not commanders, green tabard with boots on ground, eyes on the objective, but in the rear with the gear, safe and secure from all alarms, with the chaplain and the jag on special staff. Ain't no such thing as a chaplain in a foxhole. But still, primary staff members manage information related to their individual areas of expertise. Staff members are not merely data collectors and transmitters. Got all the information just sitting around. They analyze, clearly articulate our information. Staffs collect, process, store, display, and disseminate information that flows continuously into their what? Headquarters, not their hindquarters. And they provide answers to the commander's critical information requirements known as CCIR. This should all be reviewed as quickly as possible. At least that's the way we do it in the middle. I don't know how we do it at IBM 
or any other of these companies and all that kind of stuff, but this is the way we're supposed to do it in the Army. As every military education level three qualified commission officer should be aware, should be aware, transitioning from a company grade officer to the ranks of field grade, not quite flag officer, but on the way, hopefully not starting off on the rise, get cooked in the SWAT, MVP, MVMP, consists of just seven steps, and each step of the process begins with certain input. It builds upon the previous steps. Certain, certain accurate input that builds upon the previous steps in accordance with, come on, everybody should know this, Legacy FM 101-5, Staff Organization Operations, May 31, 1997. It is cumulative, like that cumulative grade point average in high school that lets you know by the end of high school, senior year, that even if your dream was to go to Harvard, Hope is not a plan. If you fail to plan, Buttercup, you plan to what? Fail! Don't want to fail on the battlefield. Like science. However, in these, or maybe you do, in these seven steps of MDMP, each step in turn has its own output that drives subsequent steps. All works together like a team. And to the degree that intelligence drives the mission cycle, it should be axiomatic that errors committed early in the process will impact on later steps. Ever find yourself on the highway 95 trying to get to California, then get to New York and realize maybe you're going the wrong way? You lost some time. Opportunity calls. You see a crime in progress and go chasing after the wrong guy. What happens? It's not counterintuitive. You see a right jab coming at your face and you forget to duck? That's on you, bud. Game over. Hit the shower, hero. Private Santiago's death while traffic. Tragic. Save lives. Bury the dead. Who will? They only stink up this one. You're not going to win if you don't have the right information. According to Secretary of Defense, rosing up intelligence doesn't help us to be successful in this fight. Hence, in the tactical operating environment, intelligence preparation of the battlefield, IPB, is a systematic, continuous process of analyzing the threat and environment in a specific geographic area. You know, watch your lane. And in step one of the IPB process, the G2 or S2 identifies characteristics, characteristics of the battlefield which will influence friendly and threat operations. Looking at both sides, want to know what's going to be advantageous to you and disadvantageous to you, but also what's going to present problems or opportunities to the other guy. And that's SWOT analysis, as well as identify gaps in current intelligence holdings. You know, you want to know not just what you know, but also what you don't know and need to find out. That's verbatim from the legacy and obsolete FM 34-130 Intelligence Preparation of Battlefield, July 1994. When I was just becoming a commissioned officer in military intelligence. If you don't know, then now you know. Welcome to the Army and this is the front. According to some piece of paper in my 201 file, Military Personnel Records Jacket, MPRJ, at one point in time, in a career of stolen valor, I had been assigned to echelon above course to the counterintelligence. Fort Meade is a commissioned officer responsible for inter alia, assisting in planning, development, prioritizing, and managing current operations for a counterintelligence group, psycho brigade, comprised of four battalions and uh, 42 detachments throughout CONUS. Maybe they lied, you know. You know these army guys. I, they're hiding the UFOs. I only do what they say, think what they want, and follow orders. According to this document, I had been responsible for oversight and group management of all red teams. Red teams. A concept with which at least our cybersecurity professionals or wannabe cybersecurity professionals have some familiarity and try to market their skills to employers to make the big bucks. Try doing it with the folks firing real bullets at you when you're answering that call of duty. Or they say is hell, or glory, or but just order chaos, depending upon your point of view. Hit that icon, soldier on. 
Grab your command, boys. Continue to march and at all times maintain your military bearing while you watch your lane. Target up. He just like that action hero in the movies, but for real. Target down. And in accordance with regulation, red teaming is an essential capability in preparing and assessing the Department of Defense's DOD's ability to execute their mission. And a red team is a group of people, people who love people, all the most wonderful people, military civilian contractor who emulate an adversary's tactics. You, know, you pretend to be the bad guy, opt for techniques and procedures, TCPs, against a targeted mission or capability. Department of Defense Manual 8570.01M defines a red team as, straight out of the book, an independent and focused threat-based effort based on formal, time-bounded, time-bounded, you don't have all day private, time-bounded, to expose and exploit information operations vulnerabilities of friendly forces as a means to improve what? Readiness. Got to be ready. Ready when your Jesus comes. The key point of the definition is that red team activity is focused and threat-based with a formal, bounded tasking in a contested environment. Nobody runs unopposed on the battlefield. And the basic doctrine and methodology is actually quite rudimentary. Simply and succinctly stated, risk management is a systematic, cyclical process of identifying and analyzing and assessing hazards, then mitigating the associated risks. You have a problem, deal with it, or you can forget about it. I don't know, read your scripture or something like that, I don't know. But that's in AR 385-30, Safety Risk Management. December 2nd, 2014, pretty recent. And in this process, before beginning hazard identification, yeah, you want to know that you have cancer, the limits of the assessment must be defined in this five-step method methodological process. It has been urged that in step one, individuals identify the hazards that may be encountered in executing an activity. You know, gee, I've got this lump. Gee, I can't see anymore. Uh, dude, maybe you need to see a doctor to find out what's going on rather than trying to figure it out on your own. The primary focus of the intelligence war fighting function is to provide timely, relevant, accurate, predictive, and tailored intelligence that focuses missions and operations. As straight from FM2 0 Intelligence. March 23rd, 2010, recent. Conversely, the mission of counterintelligence, the other guys, is to counter or neutralize foreign intelligence and security services, BIS, and international terrorist organizations, ITO, intelligence collection efforts, and includes all actions taken to detect, identify, track, exploit, and neutralize the multidiscipline intelligence activities of friends, competitors, opponents, adversaries, and enemies. It's a very holistic con concept. Very holistic concept. And that is what we did in Red Teams. Playing out for You do this when you go out to NTC. Play our poor to help to understand what the enemy is going to do against you, but also to come back to that AR and talk about what went wrong. But for Beltway Bandits and Contractors, it's out with the old and in with the new. Throw a new name on it and then you can sell it. And with folks seeking high paying jobs today, students in cybersecurity can become familiarized with the state of the art practice of purple teaming and its essential nature as a joint operation of red and blue teams. What were we doing in Jungle Operations Training Center? I don't know. Obviously, we weren't purple teaming. Called war gaming. Uh, learning the core concepts, workflows, activities, and artifacts underpinning purple team methodology. The goal at completion 
uh, that block of instruction to be able to explain how its programmatic implementation is essential to a threat-informed defense strategy and to plan a foundational purple team exercise in their own environment. A whole bunch of guys never seen a pup tent. Uh, suddenly they believe they're, you know, the uh, the Rambo of cybersecurity and they're selling this crap. The foundational, it's old shit. The uh, foundational modern understanding is that red and blue, that's new one of the sun, red and blue separately don't work well. Against an adversarial environment where the pace is fast, the scale of the adversary is enormous, and particularly in the cyber world, there is the threat capability to automate fast. Heck, now we got, you know, soldiers with javelins using AI. Let your uh, computer do all the thinking for you. This state-of-the-art capability in the cybersecurity operating environment provides a proactive approach to cybersecurity utilizing, one, cyber threat intelligence analysis. A traditional function of tactical and strategic intelligence, actually. Two, defensive engagement of the threat. A traditional function of tactical and strategic counterintelligence. And adds the enhancement of three, focus, sharing, and collaboration. That was supposed to be what your staff was for. But now it's a new thing. It's purple teaming. Hence, red and blue now working together to make purple to make the attacker's job harder by maximizing the advantage of controlling the shape of the terrain, denying the adversary easy wins and requiring the adversary to be circumspect and expend high value capabilities to achieve their goals. Okay, so this is the new news. Somebody out there and, you know, sell it to your land is saying, you weren't doing your job before, so now we're going to give it a new name, Purple Team, and go forward and see if that works. The current engagement best recommended practice of purple teaming in this way can, as they say, maximize security program ROI, return on what? Investment dollars by aligning controls to relevant threats. Relevant threats. You want to be shooting at the right thing, not wasting ammunition, and making good mitigations into measurable dashboardable effects. Something you can measure. You want something you can measure going out, Something you can measure going in. Ooh, I feel. <laughs> Who cares about what you feel? Give me a number. But initiative to purple teaming, the new buzzword, will be introduced to three phases of operation, which begin in a traditional manner, as in the military decision-making process upon receiving the mission for taking action. Developing a short, quick action list of priority or critical intelligence requirements, seeking to determine what? The nature of of the threat what is that who wants to attack me that's a good thing to know how might they do it that's a really good thing to know are my controls set up to stop it that's an important thing to know how can I emulate and test it how do I know I'm being attacked when someone is doing it surreptitiously saying no it's not me. Well, going back to higher command to gain consensus and gain command understanding how purple teaming can maximize the security program ROI. Talk to them about the dollars they're losing by aligning control to relevant threats and making good mitigations into measurable dash abortable effects, enhancing enterprise defensibility, allowing the security teams more time to hunt. They need more time, can't get it done quickly. Guess what? Somebody's getting away doing something they shouldn't be doing. But also solving system systemic issues through programmatic implementation. For example, collaboration across functions is basically what they're now selling this purple teaming and approving the intelligence analysis product. This is nothing new because just like in the old days in phase one, you're going to stave off mission creep and try to recall an understanding, try to recall an understanding of what your organization's mission is. Okay, you know, you got a war, what are you going to do? Go out and get a uh, new regulation on how to wear your uniform. Wonderful job. What kind of jewelry can I wear with my uh, combat boots? General McChrystal, however, only asks two questions upon taking command. One, what must my organization do and be? 
And two, how can I best command to achieve that? I don't know. Maybe it's in a parasol peeing in your skirt. May work. And in phase one, taking command, you know, identify with your soldier. And in phase one, taking command of a bad situation getting worse every second, our purple teams now agree that you must gain situational awareness. Find out what's going on. You know, hey, what's up, dude? To understand your operating environment as well as developing a recognition and keen awareness of the threats to your mission. Your mission. I don't know, we got schools, you know, their mission is to get you to college, but they're more concerned about affirming your personal damn pronouns. Prompting even in the cyberspace environment terrain analysis, reviewing IT architecture and how it supports your mission. You must prioritize assets because life is not a video game with an unlimited supply of bullets and you don't get a new life or a real battlefield to play another day sorry kids that's just life no do-overs no retakes like a science which is why you know that's why grandma's dead and not coming back but maybe you'll see her one day in heaven which is why you need to begin to enable the capability involving threat picture development and related actor assessments by understanding probable attack, paths, and targets. This methodology, before moving to phase two, planning and preparation, and phase three, execution is going to provide a gain of function for threat selection, identifying who is going to attack you, and in turn providing the capability of advantage by knowing your controls to the count to counter that threat. This is very, very easy. Before you go into the game, guess what? You may need to rehearse, do some planning, and get involved in some preparation. Battle is won before it is fought. Ooh. So, do you want to play a game? Let's see if we can paint a picture of this threat. Managed to beat Hitler in half the time. It is difficult to hit a target that you can't see, and it's practically impossible to hit a target that you didn't even have or want. So, let's get those targets up, place that weapon on safe, and begin to scan the area to probe for the battlefield environment, engage in threat detection, so as to develop and refine a clearer picture of the threat to better enable senior leaders to defeat, deter, and destroy this presently invisible enemy before we begin to just pull something out of our bunghole, a fifth point of contact, and just start moving because just doing something is important. Target up. This message was approved by Major Mike Webb. Honest. This has been a Filmways presentation, darling. And y'all come back now.